Ignite is a, uh, a software solution that aggregates control of all of your disparate uh, broadcast equipment into a central location. So you might have a video switcher, an audio desk, uh, graphics, uh, robotic cameras, uh, video playout, audio playout, all those different devices, they would have their own discrete controls uh, interface. What Ignite does is it brings control of all of those devices to a single location, to a single seat, so one operator is able to sit at this control surface and operate that entire broadcast from one interface. So once we have control of all those disparate devices, it certainly doesn't make sense for an operator to individually click on all those uh, interfaces. Instead, everything we do in, event, in Ignite is event-driven. Uh, an event is an example of anything that you would do to change what's currently online. Taking a camera, going to a piece of video, a live remote, a graphic, anything like that would constitute an event as far as Ignite's concerned. Uh, the simplest type of event would be a camera. Uh, so for example, if I were going to take a camera online at Ignite, I would need to speak to at least three different devices. I would need to tell the robotic camera how to frame up that camera shot. I would need to tell the audio mixer what input the talent is on so that I could hear his audio. And finally, I would need to tell the video mixer what input the camera is on so that I could see it online. All of those items must work together and in concert correctly in order to get that event online. So here on the Ignite playlist is an example of that very event for a camera. This vertical stripe of color is what we call a TME, or Transition Macro Event. And each icon in the event represents communication to a different controlled device. Uh, so for example, in our camera, here's a video switcher icon to, move the cam to uh, show the camera online. Here's an audio icon so I can hear the talent. And here's a robotic camera control so that I can get the camera positioned correctly. When I ready this event, it sends commands to those devices to prepare them to go online. When I execute the event, it then sends commands to those devices to put them online in real time. Now, during training and commissioning, we create a library of those events for cameras or video or live remotes, as I would mentioned before. A journalist would stack a show in the newsroom computer system, uh, just as they do with a traditional uh, broadcast. But prior to the show, the Ignite operator would come to the same interface and review that running order prior to air. Um, we have an ActiveX tool that assists in markup, but the effective result is for each line of the rundown, the Ignite operator is going to insert the proper event marker that will execute that event. The Ignite operator is going to review each line and determine which event is needed to execute that line on air. So for example, if we requested a two shot, we could use our ActiveX plugin to say, well, we want to do that on camera two. We can select the appropriate microphone, select the appropriate uh, camera shot, and you can take that event and put it directly into the running order. Once marked up in the newsroom system, back in Ignite, we come to the rundown import window. We can find that running order and we can import that directly to the playlist. Now at import, we're doing more than just bringing in those events, we're merging all of the MOS material, MOS video clips, uh, graphics, in addition to the sequence of stories, uh, all that material is going to be merged. So I'll import that and it populates my playlist here. So what you see now is each of those vertical stripes of color, which are events, are represented here in sequence for the entire running order. So now we have the running order on the playlist. Uh, so let's kind of do an example and step through what we might do in a live show. Uh, so I ready the first event, which is an animated open, and we run that. That's now online. Immediately the next event is ready for me to execute when it's time. I'm following the script, I'm leading the talent, and it's time to roll that first event. I will, and I go to that first event. The next one is immediately ready, and I can execute it on demand. All the while, uh, microphones that are appropriate are coming up and down, sources on audio that are appropriate are coming up and down. Now I'm ready for that first major story that starts with an open and a two shot. Here's the open. Out on this two shot, name supers come in. It turns to an over the shoulder next. I run that animation to an over shoulder. And then we go straight into a package. Now, if everything would just go according to plan, it would be a matter of stepping through this show all the way to the end. But that's not the point of live automation. You have to be able to deal with last second changes, uh, updates to the running order, uh, added shows, deleted uh, stories. All that has to be able to dealt with easily and quickly. Ignite has several ways to do that. The first of them is the running order itself. Once we import that rundown, we're not finished with it. We're always monitoring in real time. So in the same window where we imported the rundown, if changes are made, we'll see those changes appear immediately. Uh, I'll bring some stories and move them. And you can see right away the import window showed me what stories changed and where. 
Anything that changed would be uh, told to me here, whether it be uh, a new piece of video, a changed graphic, a reordered story, an added or deleted story. Once I review it and I approve it, I can accept it just as quickly as accepting that update and I'm right back into my current running order. Now taking that update is very fast, just a couple of seconds, but sometimes that's not fast enough for us and we know that. So then we come straight down here to our late breaking news panel. Late breaking news elements are the same as any other event you would have in your broadcast, except you have access to them immediately without going back to the newsroom system and without marking up the rundown again. So currently I'm ready to come out on a close up of this young lady. Rather though, I'm gonna come out to a different shot. I can drop in a different camera shot entirely. I can ready and execute that event and I have a different shot online rather than what was scripted in the running order. Again, that's faster, not always fast enough. Then we come down next to our catalyst. The catalyst is our physical control surface. It's how we navigate through the playlist. Uh, we can adjust audio and step through. And while it looks like a switcher, every button here is fully configurable to do anything that we have control over. I can bring in a graphic, I can adjust audio, move a camera, all of those items can be done from our catalyst. So let's say that rather than continue with our running order, we need to go into a live interview segment. Well, we can do that just by going to another page of my catalyst where I've programmed it to start a live interview segment. Maybe I'd just like to bring up a second microphone, ready camera two, let's take two, ready camera three, we'll take three, punch back to one, we'll dissolve to camera two, all that's fully manual outside of automation entirely. But when I'm ready to resume, I can come anywhere back in the running order list and pick up with the running order as it was planned. So I have the running order that gives me what's expected. I can always take updates to that. I can override it anytime with LBNs, or I can come down to the catalyst and go fully manual when I need to.